Hey guys, it's Max. We just got in the brand new iPhone 12 mini and today we're not only going to compare it against the iPhone 12, see how much smaller is it really and how much more comfortable in the hand is it, but we're also going to compare it to the other small iPhone, the iPhone SE and see how big of a difference do we have. We'll also compare the performance. We're going to take a look at the displays and see how much of a difference does OLED really make. We're going to compare the speakers, touch ID against face ID and much more. Let's go ahead and open up the mini and I on purpose didn't even look at these at the Apple store because I wanted to have an honest first reaction. Okay, let's get this thing out. I'm gonna peel this off right away. Okay, wow. Okay, so it's heavier than I thought. I thought it'd be a bigger difference. I didn't look up the specs side by side, but this thing is so mini. <laughs> when you put it up next to the 12, that's when you really notice it. It's really weird that size-wise, it seems like a toy. It is so small, but the feel in the hand and the weight makes it feel really premium. And honestly, holding up my hands right now, the 12 mini feels heavier than the 12. Now, I know that's not true, at least I'm guessing so. I'll have Angelica put up the weights right here, but it's just because it's so compact and there's so much crammed into such a small device, it feels a lot more dense. Now, before I compare all of the exterior differences with the 12 and SE, let's talk about chargers. Obviously, you guys probably know the new phones don't come with chargers, but in fact, the iPhone SE no longer comes with a five wall brick either. So you're gonna have to buy a charger if you don't already have one. Now, Apple will be happy to sell you theirs for $19, but we would suggest Anchors because look how much smaller this thing is and it puts out the same 20 watts. Now, Anchor is not a channel sponsor yet, but I would still suggest this because it's not only is it cheaper, but with that, if you're gonna be charging your phone with MagSafe, it actually charges faster. We actually did an ultimate charger comparison that you guys should check out after this video. Now that we're mentioning MagSafe, I do wanna say that the 12 mini does not accept the full 50 15 watt peak charging. It actually is limited to 12 watts. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. The 12 will accept the peak 15 watts, but not for very long. Not a lot of people talk about this. It actually goes down to six watts after it starts heating up a little bit. So what I'm really interested to find out is if the 12 mini will go even lower than that. And that is something that we're gonna cover in our review of the 12 mini. We'll make sure you get that info to you guys. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and help us get to 500,000 subscribers before 2021. Now I have to say that even though I was majorly disappointed in MagSafe in my ultimate charger test, I'm still enjoying using it. There's something very satisfying about it clicking on like that and then you hear that little chime come up and you can use it like this. It, as long as you don't need fast charging, it is nice. And on top of that, last few days I've been testing out the MagSafe wallet with my iPhone 12 Pro and I've liked it a lot more than I thought I would based on different videos. So let's go ahead and put it on. Look at that, it fits perfectly. It's like it was made for the iPhone 12 mini. Wow, okay, gripping this thing in the hand, that feels incredible. It felt good on my iPhone 12 Pro. It kind of filled in the way your hand holds, but it feels amazing here. And the fact that it actually matches up the edges to the edges perfectly, it just feels so natural and with that, Look at that, it doesn't pop off anywhere near as easily as on the other phones because it matches up perfectly, you're gripping the whole thing at the same time and you can't just easily rotate it and get it off. So if you're somebody that wants to use the wallet, you want a minimalist kind of design and size, this is perfect and it feels so good in the hand. And of course, with the SE, it is not gonna work because we don't have any MagSafe magnets. Now let's compare the design differences and I want to start off with the colors. Obviously, this blue pops like crazy and I'm not typically a fan of blue, but I love this one. And unfortunately, I have to say for the 12 mini, I have the product red. I am not really a fan. If we put it side by side with the SE, which is also product red, you guys will see how less rich of a red this is. Some people call it salmon. I don't know, I'm seeing pink. 
<laughs> I like the deep, darker red of the product red model. If we take a look at the, the frame here, it is lighter. It still looks like red on the mini, at least on the sides. But man, I really wish they stuck with this color. I also have to say that I love the new camera bump. They're etching into this glass. It makes it look very premium, way better than the old school way of just having a little lens with a little ring around it. Now it's interesting that the camera bumps are the same between the 12 and 12 mini. Everything's identical, but the Apple logo is actually smaller. Let's go ahead and stack these up next to each other. And this is probably the biggest difference I've seen so far. Usually phones are fairly similar. The 12 is taller, but also quite a bit wider. The difference is pretty substantial. So what does that mean for comfort in the hand? Well, the 12 feels comfortable. You have a really nice grip because of the flat edges. Let's try out the 12 mini. And it definitely feels smaller in the hand. But comfort wise, it's not as big of a difference as I expected. That's very interesting. Let's grab the SE. All right. The SE is more comfortable, honestly, because of these rounded edges, it, it just feels a little bit softer against your palm. And it's weird, it feels quite a bit thinner because of the rounded edges as well. It, it, technically it's 7.3 millimeters compared to 7.4, but it feels quite a bit thinner. Let's go ahead and stack these two up next to each other. And wow, so the SE, even though it's really small, it's still taller and wider than the new Mini. So that's very weird to see. I wasn't expecting to have as big of a difference. And putting in the hand, you honestly can't feel as much of a difference as you see visually. And as far as the frame and the buttons, the 12 minis and the 12's button is much larger and it's really clicky, it feels really nice. Whereas the SE has this really small one, it's not mushy, but it's definitely not as nice feeling. And then on the opposite side, of course, we have the volume buttons that are slightly larger. Our SIM tray actually moved as well. And on the 12 and 12 mini, we have this 5G antenna on the side. And we're gonna talk about 5G and data speeds in general in just a bit. And now I'll switch the front so you guys can see a massive difference. The iPhone 12 has the largest screen at 6.1 inches. The mini is a 5.4 inch screen. And then the SE has a 4.7. Now the mini is a lot smaller than the SE, but the screen is much larger. It fills in the whole phone, which is nice. You don't have that big chin and forehead. And I have to say that it feels weird holding the SE and seeing those massive, you know, forehead and bezel. It just feels so much nicer with a full screen. Now with that, we have a difference in design. All the new iPhones have a straight flat edge. So the screen is completely flat and then it meets the frame. Whereas the SE, it curves over the side and we have a little plastic insert that you probably can't see, but you feel the difference between the glass, the plastic, and then the metal frame. And the new designs definitely feel more premium. Of course, with the mini, we have this notch cutting into the display. That's because we have face ID there. And let's go ahead and do a quick test. Face ID versus touch ID. We just press down pretty quick. You can actually do it all in one step just by pressing down and you're there. Whereas with face ID, you either have to raise it and then it's gonna turn on the screen and then swipe up or you can tap on the screen and swipe up. And as far as speed, I mean, they're both very quick. Uh, it's hard to tell a difference. And for convenience, I love Face ID and times where you don't have a mask, you if you're wearing gloves, it still works. Whereas if you're wearing a mask, Touch ID is definitely nice. Now you might think that the Face ID sensors are smaller because everything's smaller. And that's actually not true. If we put them side by side like this, the whole notch is identical in size. But because the screen is smaller, all of the icons have to be cramped in there and they're quite a bit smaller as well. Now, one thing that almost nobody knows about is that the bezel on the 12 mini is actually the thinnest bezel out of all of the new iPhones, the Pros, the Pro Max. They were able to slim it down just a little bit. And now let's compare the display panels themselves, the brightness, the quality. The 12 mini is identical to the 12 Pro other than size. So I'm gonna scoot this over and we're gonna compare LCD versus OLED. I'm surprised that I can actually tell a difference in terms of clarity or sharpness. The icons and the text look more crisp on the 12 mini than the SE, which still has a retina display. That's because the 12 mini actually has the most detailed screen in terms of pixels per inch out of any of the iPhones. 
tones. Now, the next thing I wanna take a look at is the shift in brightness. We have LCD versus OLED, and if we look from the side, the SE gets much darker if we're not watching perfectly uh, just facing us, whereas the OLED screen doesn't have any issues. And the good thing is the new 12s, they have the best OLED screens that don't turn blue from the side. And now let's compare the brightness. Both are set to manual brightness. Okay, very interesting. The new one does look brighter, but not by that much. And that's because the 12 and the 12 mini, their displays, their OLED displays are limited to 650 nits, which is similar to a really good LCD display like the one we have in the SE. The Pro models, those can actually get brighter. Now we also have a difference in terms of HDR. So these OLED screens, they can actually get up to 1200 nits if it needs it. Okay, this is interesting. We're setting up to compare HDR and I just updated the YouTube app and not only does the SE now playback in HDR, but it also allows 4K60 playback. Now, as you can see, the SE actually has a larger video if we're not zooming in on the iPhone 12 mini. Now, right away, I see a massive difference. The iPhone 12 mini looks like HDR. We have nice contrast. It actually is sharper, even though the video streaming is the same, uh, and the brights just pop so much. Not only that, uh, but in the darker scenes, we have a lot of contrast. Blacks are pure black because of the OLED screen instead of kind of gray. Uh, and man, even the colors, they're a little bit more saturated, they pop a little bit more. The 12 mini gives you an HDR viewing experience. Now, if we wanna flip the whole screen, you are gonna cut out a part of your image. So some of the parts get cut out. That does give you a little bit more of an immersive experience without the huge chin and forehead. Um, but we do have that notch cutting into it. Overall, the iPhone SE HDR video doesn't look like HDR. It looks like just an option where the button comes up, whereas a 12 mini video looks great. With that said, if you watch a lot of videos, the iPhone 12 gives you a much larger display. It's definitely noticeable and it is more immersive because of that larger screen. Now, as far as actual quality, I can't really tell a difference. If I look close in this shot right there, the building, it actually looks a little bit sharper with the finer detail, probably because of the extra pixel density, but it is almost identical. And now it's time for our speaker comparison. I have to say I'm expecting the 12 mini to absolutely smoke the SE because there's been so many generations of changes and I guess it'll be cool to see how big of a difference there really is. But what I'm most curious about is how it stacks up compared to the regular 12. This phone is much larger. So are we still gonna get the newer, nice, loudspeakers or do they have to downgrade them so I'm gonna go ahead and split this up into two separate speaker comparisons so we could tell the actual difference go ahead and put on your pair, best pair of headphones or the only pair of headphones you have and let's take a listen You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below, which one sounds better and why. Now, I have to say that I was a little bit wrong. I was expecting a bigger difference. Now, there are definitely some clear differences, some that you guys may not be able to hear because we're recording through a mono mic and going you know, through YouTube. But uh, the bass, surprisingly, was basically the same. Mids were a little bit richer on the 12 mini. Same thing with the highs. They're a little bit more crisp and sharp, just like the rest of the new phones. Now, where I noticed the biggest difference was the stereo sound. Listening to the SE, a lot of the sound majority is coming from the bottom speaker and the earpiece speaker is filling it in a little bit, whereas the 12 mini sounds perfectly balanced, much more immersive. Now, along with that, uh, as far as the peak volume, this is actually the same. I used my Apple Watch to test and both of them peaked at the same exact 81 decibels. That's pretty close to the phone. So no differences in volume. Now, the next thing that I'm curious about is how the 12 mini compares to the regular 12. So let's go ahead and take a listen.
Once again, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. And I have to say, yes, my speculations were correct. The regular 12 is louder than the 12 mini and it definitely sounds better. The 12 mini, it doesn't sound bad. It sounds nice and balanced, but the mids and the bass in the 12, my goodness, it is a big jump, much deeper, much richer. The high frequencies are basically the same. And then we do get a little bit more loudness as well. So with the larger phone, you do get better speakers. And if you watch a lot of movies without headphones, it's gonna help. And now let's get into performance, starting off with data speeds. As you may know, Apple is really pushing 5G on all of the new iPhones. And I have to say, it actually does matter, even if you don't have 5G in your city. Now what's very unique about this year is that for the first time ever, all of the iPhones, the 12, the 12 Pro, the Pro Max, and the Mini have the same exact antennas. With the iPhone SE, you actually had a worse antenna and modem than the iPhone 11 Pros. The SE actually has two by two antennas instead of four by four. So you would take a hit in speeds and reception. Now with the newer phones, we actually did a bunch of testing already. Here's some shots from our previous test and the new 12s are so much faster as far as internet speeds. Even if you don't have 5G in your city, the standard LTE is much faster. That is also because we're using Snapdragon modems now. And even the 12 mini, the cheapest one has the very best X55 Snapdragon Dragon modem. And if you look at some other Android phones, for the cheaper, smaller phones, you'll get worse quality reception and speeds. In the last few weeks, I've seen a massive difference both in terms of speeds and reception, and that's comparing uh, 12 Pro against my 11 Pro Max, which has even better antennas than the SE. So if you guys want to see a real world comparison, go and check the video that I made. That also includes tethering if you use that. And now let's compare the processor and graphics performance. I have Geekbench 5 opened up here, and we're gonna go ahead and run the CPU test. One thing you'll notice is that we do have a difference in RAM. The iPhone SE has three gigs of RAM, just like the previous iPhone 11, whereas the 12 mini and the 12, they have four gigs of RAM, like the older 11 Pros. So how much of a difference does that make in the real world? Well, I don't think it's a big difference as far as app loading, with these newer phones, there's a lot more processing going on, especially if you're taking photos and videos and you really need the extra RAM. And in some cases, you'll have background apps that could close to make sure you have enough uh, kind of RAM for that task. Whereas with the SE, the cameras, which we'll talk about in just a bit, the whole processing is much lower, much less intensive. So as far as RAM, I don't think that's gonna make a big difference. And we have our scores, and I have to say that this is the closest scoring I've ever seen between the Mini and the regular 12. They're almost identical. We're slightly under 1600 for single core, slightly over 4000 for multi-core. So these don't get as high of a score as the Pro models do. I'm not sure why, maybe because the Pros have extra RAM. And with the SE, it is still a shockingly good score. So the difference is about 20%, both in single core and in multi-core. And I also have to say that for 400 bucks, man, you're getting some killer performance. This thing's gonna beat out all the Android phones on the market, even like the $1,400 ones. And now let's go ahead and take a look at graphics performance. I'm gonna run Geekbench's metal test. And here are the scores. It looks like the Mini actually has the best score, which was surprising. I thought maybe because of thermals it'd be lower, uh, but they are pretty close to the regular 12. And the SE, that is once again a really excellent score. So we're seeing that the Mini's close to 30% better graphics performance in terms of metal. And uh, the SE with I, the latest iOS 14, it actually jumped up by quite a bit in terms of performance. Now, another difference that you're not seeing here is the new neural core, the neural engine with the new A14 Bionic. That has a massive improvement. And in yesterday's video, we actually did a video editing test, including some Dolby Vision footage, and that actually showed a really good result uh, between the A13 and the A14 processor. So make sure you guys go and check out that comparison if you haven't seen that yet. And now let's talk about the biggest concern about the 12 mini, and that is the battery life. 
First off, let's compare the milliamp hours of the batteries. We have about 1800 on the SE, about 2200 on the 12 mini, so 400 more, and then stepping up to the regular 12, 2800, so 600 milliamp hours more. Now, obviously, we haven't been able to test these just yet. We'll talk about battery life in our iPhone 12 mini review, but I did watch a couple great comparisons, one from Mr. Who's the Boss, the other one from the tech chap, and the iPhone SE will get you about four hours of screen on time, maybe five if you don't use it as hard. Whereas the 12 mini, it looks to have about an hour to an hour and a half better screen on time than the SE. And then the same thing goes when you upgrade to the iPhone 12. That one looks to have about an hour, hour and a half more than the 12 mini. So if you're a power user, I definitely would not buy the iPhone SE. The battery is its weakest point. The 12 mini isn't great, but it's not bad, surprisingly, especially if you don't do a lot of gaming and heavy tasks, whereas iPhone 12, that's clearly the winner. Jumping into cameras, the 12 and the 12 mini, thankfully, have the same exact camera, so you don't miss out on anything, which is really awesome. And then comparing to the SE, well, obviously, this one just has one camera. You're missing out on the ultrawide, so here's a comparison shot of the extra width that you can get. Now, as far as the standard wide camera, we also have some massive differences. The 12 photos look great. We have night mode, we have smart HDR3, deep fusion. Whereas the iPhone SE, it has a camera from the iPhone 8. The software has been improved a little bit, but to be honest, if you care about photo quality, you definitely should be buying the 12 mini. And as far as portrait shots, both of them can do it with the rear cameras, but the SE cannot take it of regular objects, just of people. Now the really weird thing is that with the front facing cameras, the iPhone SE can also take portrait mode shots. You guys see the comparison right over here. Now, of course you can expect that with the 12 mini because it does have all those extra face ID sensors, but the SE doesn't. And on other devices like the iPads, Apple won't let you take portrait mode shots without having the face ID sensor. So that's very weird. Both of these phones have 12 megapixel front facing cameras. So here's a sample. You guys let me know which one looks better as far as the video quality and which one sounds better in terms of microphones. Now the 12 mini can shoot 4K instead of only 1080p on the SE. And not only that, the SE can only shoot at 30 frames per second whereas the 12 mini could shoot 4K 60 frames per second. Of course, with that, we have Dolby vision differences, so we can record HDR up to 30 frames per second. So in general, if you care about video, once again, the 12 mini is a much better phone. And now let's talk about the prices and then our final verdict. Now, the iPhone SE comes in at a very low $399, so 400 bucks gets you an awesome performing iPhone. Now, the 12 mini costs 699, 700 bucks, and then $100 more for the 12. So, for that price difference, is it worth spending the extra money in getting the 12 mini? Personally, I think for most of you guys that are watching this video, it is. You're getting a lot better camera performance, massively better camera performance, and you're getting that OLED display, which looks so much better when watching videos. It's full screen. It's a much nicer display. And of course, with that, you're also getting about an hour to probably an hour and a half extra screen on time as well. If you're somebody that's upgrading from a really old phone and you don't really care about phones that much, you just want something that's gonna last for the next five years, the SE's gonna do a good job. But now that we have the 12 mini, for those of you guys that want a small phone, I would go for that. Now, how does it compare to the regular 12? Well, as I mentioned in the beginning, as far as comfort in the hand, it's not that big of a difference, not like I expected. And you are taking a trade off, both in battery life, probably about an hour and a half, maybe even closer to two hours, depending on what you do, and the speaker quality, and then the nice larger screen, which is a lot more immersive for watching video. The last thing I wanna add is gaming. If you are a gamer, I would absolutely deal with the extra size because when you're playing games, the regular 12 is so much more immersive with that screen. In fact, I enjoy the Pro Max for that larger screen when you're gaming. And I feel like with the 12 mini's tiny screen, you're gonna cover up so much of the UI with your thumbs. It's just not gonna be anywhere near as nice. So I would spend the extra hundred dollars for those of you guys that are really into media. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section
section below. How badly do you want a tiny phone? Are you gonna take the extra trade-offs or are you just gonna go with the 12? And if you really want the SE, let me know why. Make sure you guys click that circle above if you guys wanna see our full review of the Mini where we're gonna investigate the charging performance with MagSafe amongst a lot of other things. And of course, you can help us reach 500,000 subs before the end of this year. Click one of those videos over there if you wanna see our ultimate charger test or our 5G test. This has been Max and I will see you in the next video.